Hello world, and we are back. My name's Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 97 of my poker vlog. And for this episode, I cover the last session I played in Las Vegas at the Bellagio. But before I get into it, I have two quick announcements. First is that I recently partnered with a new poker club called No Limit Llamas. This is a new poker club that's going to operate in the metaverse. And right now you have the opportunity to become a co-owner in it. Join their Discord for more information about how to become a part owner in this club and begin earning passive income, as well as the opportunity to win a new 2021 Ferrari, as well as a chance to play in some awesome free roll tournaments. Speaking of which, I'll be in one this Wednesday, January 19th. 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope to see you there. It's going to be a great time. For any other questions, feel free to message me on Instagram and I'll be happy to get back to you. And my second announcement is that this Friday, January 21st and 22nd, I'll be back at Orange City Racing Car Club. I'm going to be filming some new videos and getting a lot of hours in. So I hope to see you all there. And without further ado, let's roll the tape. Alright, first hand of note at this Bellagio 2-5, $500 max game. I'm in under the gun plus one. I raised to $15 with ace king of clubs. Unfortunately, I get four callers. So we are five ways to a flop of three deuce deuce with one club. Now, normally I would not bluff into four other people with ace king when it's massively multi-way. If I just whiff, I think it's fine to just check fold it sometimes. But on this particular hand, no one should really ever have a three or a deuce. And I have backdoor clubs as well in case I'm called. So the fact that it's likely that everyone missed and there's plenty of cards I can continue on if I'm called, I decide to bet $40. Well, when three other players call, I'm definitely gonna size up if I turn a club or obviously turn a pair. But on the five of hearts, it's, it's a card where I can't really continue all that much. Any one of my opponents can have six to jacks and I'm never really getting those holdings to fold to a second barrel. And the fact that I picked up a gut shot, I think it's a fine card to just check and hope to see a free river. So I check and it does check around. The river is the queen of clubs. Now I do think I can bet and represent a queen and get a lot of credibility as I could easily have ace, queen, king, queen and play it the exact same way. However, before I get the opportunity to, the big blind decides to bet $150 and I'm kind of just forced to fold. So not the best start in this 2-5 game. So a little bit later, there's an early position open to $15. The hijack three bets to 60, and I'm in the big blind with ace king offsuit this time. Probably should just four bet get it in when we're playing 500 max, but this is the first time I'd ever seen the hijack three bet at all. So when it's the first three bet, we've been playing a few orbits, and we've never really seen it before. I typically give the first time I see someone do an action a bit of credibility. So I'm just going to call this one, and the early position opener folds. So we are heads up to a flop of ace, four, five, two diamonds. Definitely the flop that I was hoping for. I check it to my opponent who bets $75. I think this is an easy raise. I'm going to get called by all ace, queen, ace, jack, ace, 10. So this is a great spot to pile as much money in as possible. So I raised at $205 and my opponent pretty quickly goes all in. I'm happy to snap it off. And unfortunately for this one, my opponent also has ace, king, so we are going to chop this one up. So far in this session, Ace King has not been very profitable for me. 100 bucks. The ad said 3,000. For that, I give you 100 and you're lucky to get that. Next hand of note. The Undergun player raises to $15. There's one caller. 
I call with Jack 10 offsuit, the small blind calls. So we're going four ways to a flop of 10, eight deuce, two spades. Small blind checks, the pre-flop aggressor checks, the middle position player checks, and now it's on to me. Definitely gonna bet here. There are plenty of draws I can get value from and Jack 10's doing pretty good against most of them. So I bet $40 and the small blind starts thinking for a long time, counts out the $40, shuffles it a bit checks his cards two or three times acts like he's gonna put it in and then grabs an extra hundred dollars and puts that in and then it folds back to me in general i'd say in lower stakes the counting out the call thinking about it and then raising is pretty nutted a lot of the time. I haven't seen too many people do that with a bluff, but taking the live read out of it, my hand specifically I think does pretty bad against a check raise. I would much rather not have the jack of spades specifically because I'm hoping my opponent could do this with jack nine or queen jack of spades, but having it blocks a lot of the draws that I'm hoping he could check raise bluff with. So with many combo draws eliminated from his range, he really only has jack nine of spades flopped sets and flopped two pairs and maybe occasionally an ace x of spades but against that range i'm either crushed or my opponent has a ton of equity so it's a pretty easy fold in this particular spot Bad guy! <laughs> Stop it! He's got my money! thanks next hand of note there is an under the gun ten dollar straddle there are three calls before i'm in the cutoff and look down at pocket queens this is definitely a scenario I've been waiting for. Gonna size up pretty large on this one. I make it $85. Definitely want to commit people to stronger hands and not let it go massively multi-way with pocket queens. Well, to my surprise, the small blind raises to $225. Similar as I've said before, this is the first three bet I've ever seen out of this player. Because it's a straddle, you can almost consider it a four bet as well. But at this point, we've probably been playing for like two or three hours and i haven't seen this opponent just standardly raise yet let alone three bet there's a lot of credibility to this one i think either way when it folds back to me i'm never gonna fold queens especially when i get to play in position and evaluate post flop i put his range on aces through tens ace king ace queen maybe ace jack so there are still some hands that i'm ahead of but not too many when the flop is nine seven four rainbow i'm expecting my opponent to bet small a lot of the time but when he checks to me, I'm extremely confident I have the best hand. I think if he had aces or kings, he'd probably just bet small 100% of the time. As I only have 350 left in my stack, so less than a pot size bet. My opponent could easily get the money on the river with like a $100 or $75 bet on the flop with aces or kings. So when he checks to me, I'm eliminating that from his range and putting him on ace x. And I'd rather just take down this pot right now instead of letting an ace or a king catch up. So I just jam all in myself. Yeah, when my opponent snap calls, I think he just did a very excellent trap with aces. But no, he chose the first three bet of his entire session to be with pocket nines. God speak, Spider-Man. And then gets absolutely rewarded with it. Wish I could have just got queens all in pre-flop and felt better about it. Definitely gives me a chance to win. Definitely a much better play. This one hurts because there's several ways I could have won and several ways I could have played where I don't get stacked. But... Poker's rough sometimes, and we have to rebuy. My back. Oh, my back. Please take a moment and subscribe. So we are definitely on the comeback trail. We are not going to give up. We're definitely going to battle back. So for the next hand, it folds to me in the hijack. I raised to $15 with a suited ace. The cutoff calls and the big blind calls. So we're going three ways to a flop of four, five, six, rainbow, no club. We would much rather have at least one club on the board, but we'll take open ended on the top end. So I continue for $25. Happy just take it down right here. No need to see any additional cards. Well, the cutoff calls and the big blind folds. The turn is a beautiful eight of hearts. So now that we have the effective nuts, as no one should ever really have nine, seven, my opponent has less than $100 in his stack and my method to getting all the money in would actually be to down bet this board connecting card and then hopefully just get it all in on the river. 
So I bet 20. My opponent decides to call. The river is the six of spades. Even though it's board pairing, it really doesn't matter to me. If my opponent had a set, I was never folding anyway and probably would have gotten it in on the turn. So as I'm first to act, I bet $60. My opponent goes all in, which was a little bit more, and I'm happy to call that off. So definitely a fortunate river card, but also I think he would have folded turn to a larger size bet. So happy with how I played this one. Next interesting hand. I'm in early position with ace nine of clubs. I raise to $15. After three callers, the button decides to raise to 100. And in this particular hand, the button just got stacked to the, the hand before. So when someone's betting and their chips aren't even on the table, I really give it very little credit for actually having a good hand. It, it's a lot easier to say raise with nothing in front of you than to literally grab the chips and put it in yourself, I believe. So I'm going to call and see what I can do post-flop. I also think that calling here likely gives some of the other players behind a good price to call as well. And with, with a hand that could easily flush over flush someone, I'm happy to play it multi-way. But everyone else folds. So we are heads up to a flop of five four four two diamonds this is a board where i'm already planning a check raise bluff my opponent can never really have a four me as the initial raise three bet caller i could have a bunch of fours additionally i could have any two hearts i could have six seven this board is just much better for me than a three better i'm gonna check raise this a lot of the time my opponent's more weighted towards ace x and those whiffed pretty hard on this one to all the way to the point where they could be drawing slim to dead if i had like four three or four five but when i check my opponent checks it back turners the three of hearts i actually think this is a good candidate to check raise a second time if he decides to finally bet with his ace x because he thinks he has a gut shot I could have any two flush draws here. I could have the six, seven coming through. I could have four X, pocket fives, pocket threes, pocket sixes, which would be pretty happily to check raise on this board as well. So this is a board where I'm definitely gonna check raise again against a three better, but I don't really wanna lead out because I think ace X could happily just call a standard bet and just go for their overs and gut shot. So I check preparing for a check raise, but my opponent checks it back again. The river's a deuce. And since I put him on ace X the entire time, I really don't see a reason to bet here. I believe my opponent's pretty competent and just knows it's pretty much ace against ace at this point. So I check, he checks it back, and he has ace king. So technically got a suck out, which is nice. Next interesting hand. An early position player raised to $20. I'm in middle position with ace king offsuit. I sure hope I can win just a single hand this session with ace king. I three bet to $75. Well, the player to my left calls, the early position raiser calls as well. So we are three ways to a flop of six, five, three, two spades. Similar to the first ace king hand, in a three bet pot, I don't believe too many of my opponents can ever have cards this low as I've been playing pretty tight most of the session and I think my opponents would pick up on that and not play this loose against me. So I think this is a good board to bluff at. I think they'll fold a lot of the time. A lot of their missed like queen jack and king 10 and stuff like that is likely just going to fold in a three bet pot to a C bet on this particular board. So I bet $100. The player to my left folds but the early position opener decides to call a second time. Now the early position opener and three bet caller is happy face hold'em. So a fellow vlogger who I believe is pretty competent in the game, I don't expect him to be playing two out of line. So when the turn is the 10 of clubs, and he checks it to me. I think I'll just take my free card and hope to bink an ace or a king. Then try to bluff him multiple streets. So when the turn goes check, check, the river is the seven of clubs. Brings in backdoor clubs. And to this card, Happy Face decides to lead $225. I missed the part where that's my problem. Now, spoiler alert, I call with just ace king high. <laughs> you serious? Now, to begin with, the reason I call and don't raise is I literally have like $100 to $110 behind after the $225. So the times I'm wrong, I only have to pay $225. A raise jam probably gets all of his bluffs to call anyway, as most people don't bet $225 to fold for an extra $110, $115 more. Just the stack size kind of forces my hand to not be able to turn my hand into a bluff and raise. But I still don't really want to fold. So the merit towards calling is that, first of all, with a board that's so disconnected there aren't too many rational two pair combinations 
out there besides maybe six seven so apart from that if he had like seven eight and river showdown value i don't really expect him to bet so much on the river with just a single pair if my opponent river showdown value i expect him to check call a lot more often than lead the flush is kind of unlikely because i have the ace of clubs he can never have an ace x of clubs and if my opponent had missed spades i think a lot of his hands are like 10 nine of spades 10 jack of spades or two face card spades i believe he'd bluff with the face card spades that whiff and have no showdown value but if he had a 10 he'd probably just check call and especially when the backdoor flush draw comes through additionally i could easily have a sex of clubs where i three bet pre c bet the flop with just a backdoor actually get one of my backdoor cards and want to just realize my equity and check it back so i could easily have a sex of clubs definitely seems kind of odd to lead for this sizing if you especially only had a single pair all my over pairs are still very easily in range and i'd happily call and i could easily have an ace of clubs so now let's think about some hands that i actually beat that might play the same way maybe my opponent let out with ace jack called one pretty standard c bet because he was unconvinced and had like ace jack of spades check check river has nothing decides to bluff at it i beat ace jack ace queen which are very credible for my opponent very realistic honestly so there's actually hands that i beat that would play the exact same way as well as the single pairs that i don't think he would play this way the two pairs that are very unlikely as how disconnected the board is and i block a lot of the made flushes so with all that in mind i decide to put in the call and my opponent instantly says good call love to hear those words i show my hand and uh he doesn't throw his in the muck he flips his over too and has ace king as well still can't win with ace king but i guess we'll kind of take this result as a positive one a final hand of note the cutoff limps i'm on the button with pocket tens i raise to twenty dollars well the small blind throws in a hundred dollars and then after the big blind calls the 20 he explains that he meant to make it a hundred one chip is definitely a call but the fact that he wanted to raise is setting off some alarm bells put the cutoff calls and i'm pretty happy to see it just for 20 rather than 100 from a player who hasn't three bet at all either so you know credibility but when the flop is 10 9 9 rainbow i am so mad that my opponent did not get to raise to 100 i need that money it's all right sir now's your chance throw it out there just kidding he checks so i guess he can't have jacks plus which I would love to be against right now but luckily for me the big blind bets 65 when the cutoff folds there's absolutely not a single doubt in my mind that my opponent has a single nine which means he's pretty much drawing dead if he pairs a second card nines over does not beat tens over so happy to just call right now and hopefully get a few more bets out of him a raise would make his nine with weak kickers be in a tough spot i think so i'm just gonna call this one when the turn is the six of diamonds also a pretty good card for me if my opponent had any bluffs one of them would be seven eight which also gets there slash is still losing but my opponent checks to me i definitely want to get all the money in by the river and i think the best way to do that is to bet 100 dollars right now i think it sets up the pot with my exact stack size i would have a little over a 400 dollars river jam so i bet 100 dollars. my opponent decides to call the river is the ace of diamonds which i actually think is one of the greatest cards i could ever hope for because if i ever had a bluff on the turn it would include like ace king ace queen where i finally bink a top pair and just go with it additionally this specific ace is diamonds so backdoor diamonds come in if my opponent somehow has a flush or a straight or any of that he's very unlikely to be able to fold to a jam so that's what i do all in approximately 460 dollars and back to the original i think my opponent just has a nine and i don't think he's gonna be able to fold trips especially when he let out for 65 on the flop he was very confident even though the run out's dicey not many people fold trips so he eventually throws the one chip in and i show my hand and he mucks he later tells me that he had ace nine and couldn't believe he called and i had to politely explain to him that he should happily beat me into the pot when he rivers an ace there and it's just unfortunate that's a cooler so for this bellagio two five no limit hold'em 500 max we are into the game for one thousand dollars out of the game for 14 55 which across six hours equates to 75 dollars an hour or 15 big blinds an hour
If you have made it all the way to this point, thank you. I appreciate it. I hope to get videos out more regularly after I get this weekend sessions under my belt. Stay tuned. There's always going to be more to come.